Good morning. Thank you for staying with us on The Breakfast Club. And as promised, we are having breakfast with Matthias Gelber. And he is the greenest man on the planet, as promised earlier. Now, you know, it's Matthias Gelber. Good morning, Matthias. Good morning, Elaine. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. Thank you very much. I'm enjoying myself here Excellent. next to you. Oh, very good. <laughs> now, you can tell us a little bit about what the greenest man on the planet really means. Um, how did you get this title, mm. greenest man on the planet? Yeah, actually, greenest man on the planet... Uh, People are in Malaysia call me as well, Mr. Hijau. Mr. Hijau. Mr. Hijau. Hijau. Unfortunately, I didn't make the invitation to the wedding like Mr. Bean did. Mr. They didn't Bean. invite Mr. You Green. You didn't make but, the invite. Uh, oh, unfortunately. Yes, but maybe Neither next time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Green. Uh, I think I won the contest because it was a combination of Green Practical Living. I have an electricity bill of 25 ringgit a month. Wow. Electricity doesn't just come from the plug, it comes from the power plant. The more electricity we consume, the more emissions we as an individual are responsible for. Mm -hmm. I don't have a car. You don't I have take, a car? How do yes. you live in Kuala Lumpur without a car? <laughs> jalan Jalan, okay. uh, taxi obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, my plan is to buy an electric bicycle fairly soon. Mm -hmm. um, then my business activities are all green. I have a green pension system. Wow. So basically I try and live holistically a green lifestyle, minimizing my personal environmental impact and maximizing the positive contribution that I can make on this planet. That's you know, it. with our money, we can invest in something that does good to the environment That's and right. at the same time provides a return. True. A lot of people have put their money into things that might be destructive to the environment. Correct. So my philosophy is everything must be green so that I'm an agent of positive change on the planet. That's excellent. Excellent. That's really good to hear. And this contest, it was uh, organized by the Canadian Body Third Whale. Yes, How did you yes. hear about it? Basically, I got an email asking me to apply for the contest. Oh, wow. They dubbed it American Idol for Green People. <laughs> How long have you been in this uh, green process? Is it all your life? Uh, has Have you been doing this for a long time? I think when I grew up in my German Kampung, I was surrounded by nature. Mm -hmm. I had snow in the winter, which is hardly there anymore mm. nowadays. Yes, because and of the climate change. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, the, the amazing thing is, it was three months of winter snow. Mm. Now my brother's children, they have, if they are lucky, one week. Oh or dear. this year, they had loads of it in December and then it all disappeared. So the fluctuations are not clear anymore. Like here in Malaysia, people used to organize the plantation in the rubber industry mm -hmm. according to the seasons. That's now, right. they cannot anymore. Can't tell the seasons. Yeah. Even the weather is going mm. a bit crazy. It yes. rains and it's yes. hot. It's a yes. little bit odd. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, tell us about Malaysia. Uh, how long have you been here? And you know, what are your plans uh, of, yeah. of going green? Because I think mm. you always do green in all your efforts. Yes, yes. I've been here six years now. I originally came here under Malaysia, my second home. Oh, okay. And um, I think I still have a role to play in Malaysia. Let's mm -hmm. see uh, how long. Sometimes I get asked, how long do you want to stay in Malaysia? Yeah, I don't know yet. Yeah. I think like yesterday I was at two events, uh, one great event in Klang, mm -hmm. Sai Baba organized a walk for values. There were mm -hmm. more than 5,000 people there and I was the environmental speaker. I could reach out to the young generation and try and inspire them to live a green life and make a green contribution. At the same time, recently I've been asked to, uh, to be a committee member of a new uh, green NGO called mm -hmm. PECA, mm -hmm. uh, um, which is about um, protecting the environment here in Malaysia and the Sultana of Pahang is our patron mm -hmm. and Tunku Kaisha is our president. So we have quite a lot of uh, uh, people that can make a difference that are genuinely green and mm -hmm. want to make a difference. And our plan is to gazette certain forest areas as oh. royal forest reserves that's in order great. to uh, help preserving that for future generations. Yes, so I think that's great. Yeah, so somehow I think uh, uh, I can make a contribution just by, you know, being a simple German Kampung boy mm -hmm. in a foreign land uh, as a guest here chipping in with my ideas on how we can live green lives no, completely excellent because uh, you know as a Malaysian it's very hard mm. to um, start going green mm. as you can see you know being a tree mm. hugger is yes. not easy and wanting to make that effort it's difficult mm. because the facilities are not as conducive mm. in Malaysia yes. so where do you think Malaysia stands on being or going towards the green effort mm. how can we further improve ourselves how mm. can we further you know achieve what uh, you know some other countries yeah. have in yeah. terms of the recycling and yeah. Yes. going green effort yes i think malaysia is kind of uh, showing some promising mm. ambition that's true i agree and uh, there's a lot of discussion about green technology going green that's there right. are a lot of green events mm -hmm. but i see a lot of people go to green events they plant a tree mm -hmm. uh, i organized a lot of tree planting events with with some friends from sai baba gec uh, where we had 
up to a thousand people turn up. Mm -hmm. But I wonder how many of them actually then the next day when they're back home, you know, implement it in their, in their right. daily lives and go green. What, so what do they do when they go yeah, home, right? Yeah, yeah. That, that's where we need to make the difference. Plus, I think actually Malaysia as an economy mm -hmm. has a uh, lift its economic growth mm -hmm. based on mother nature's uh, efforts okay. if you look at the malaysian uh, industry it's oil and gas it's right. uh, timber right. it's palm oil it it's rubber uh, tourism rubber it's all resource consumption based right. so what mother nature has delivered over millions of years we consume it in a short point uh, amount of time yes. it's helped the economic uh, development but we're but exhausting yeah it. we're exhausting it mm -hmm. and in the future we need to make money from technology That's from right. innovation Innovation. Green technology is being talked about, but so far I see the implementation on the ground not yet uh, being pursued enough because the Malaysian economy is kind of a short-term economy. That's People right. want fast money. Green technology, Correct. great opportunities, but it's not tomorrow big returns and we need to change the economy from within if people don't buy green buildings mm -hmm. then you know it might be difficult to to uh, offer green buildings to the marketplace Correct. if we are not willing to put the money into green then we can't change the economy from within so we need to buy green we need to live green and we need to offer green solutions even on a business level that's right but in, uh, one of the things that I noticed is that a lot of people want to go green think mm. about going green talk about going green but you know can't really put the commitment about putting it into action yeah it's yeah. very hard you yeah. know it's like yeah yeah I want to go green yes yeah. I agree on this da, yeah. da, da, yeah. but you know it's yeah. hard to actually commit how you yes. committed no yes. car you know yes. don't use yeah. aircon and you know all that yeah. effort yeah. It, it's it's really tough because we still want to be comfortable yes we yes. still want to take our nature for granted yes to yes a certain extent. so now how do we change that mindset yeah how do we you know you, you, you're exactly right Elaine I think that is the biggest stumbling block mm. that people perceive it as difficult yes, that's right. and uh, I think we need to look at uh, um, where can we make a difference mm -hmm. without you know pushing ourselves too hard mm -hmm. and at the same time benefiting from it mm -hmm. uh, it starts with your electricity at home if mm -hmm. you actually can save 20% of your electricity mm -hmm. you save 20% of the cost mm -hmm. I think Malaysians are very uh, cost, cost conscious, conscious. That's right, so we if, are. We can, <laughs> if we can link those two things you know saving money by going green rather than what is the perception at the moment inconvenient yes. and uh, is gonna cost you more yes I mean people have organic food they know it's healthy you know it people is. don't want to eat uh, normal contaminated food right. that's why they're willing to pay a little bit more mm -hmm. but I think we need to shift the perception I've been in a condo the other day in Butterworth mm -hmm. that actually cost the developer less to develop because it was using insulated concrete blocks and the people who were living there they didn't need air conditioning because wow. the building itself was cool so we need to use innovative solutions mm -hmm. to promote green where it doesn't necessarily cost more but there is a return from going green okay. and there is the convenience that you can live in your house I actually talked with the residents there mm -hmm. they didn't even know that they had used insulated uh, uh, concrete blocks and I asked them how much is your electricity bill they said oh 70 ringgit we have two uh, fridges but we don't need the air conditioning really because oh, wow. it's cool in Penang we have a building as well a condo and it's so hot we need loads of air conditioning That's right. so we need to shift that experience you know the Kampung people in Malaysia they had houses on stilts That's when right. they came home it was cool without yes. air conditioning right. so we need to learn back again from you know the past how people used to live with nature in a cost-effective way uh, it's education yes. uh, at the end of the day where you know, mm. we educate people in terms of uh, what is good and what we need to yeah. also take responsibility yeah. for. Because yeah. I think at the end of the day, uh I, there are still a lot of people who mm. say that you know uh, it doesn't affect me yes, you know yes. um, I, or I don't have children or it doesn't matter you yeah. know uh, we, we don't see the results now yeah. or we don't see the effects now actually on that point mm. uh, I totally agree with you you know people don't see it's relevant to them correct it doesn't touch me correct. yet but Malaysia had its corals bleaching mm -hmm. last year mm -hmm. and uh, people were not allowed maybe still are not allowed to go into certain areas and that's very important for the Malaysian economy the diving yes. tourism is very important right. so corals are bleaching in Malaysia mm -hmm. Uh, Perlis and Kedah just lost their rice harvest. Mm -hmm. The government is talking about the cost of adaptation to climate change. Right. Certain areas that haven't seen floods before have floods now That's because right. of construction activities correct, correct. and the trees up on the hillsides where a lot of the water and the erosion might come from are not there anymore mm -hmm. because we didn't appreciate the value that the trees delivered right. by actually capturing the water, mm -hmm. holding the soil together. Mm -hmm. So the indirect cost 
of environmental degradation for Malaysia is huge. The taxpayer is paying huge amounts of money right. on putting that right again. Malacca recently, to clean up the Malacca River, paid 800 million wow. ringgit. 800 you million. know, So the fact that we are not uh, preventing the pollution at source is costing the economy huge Correct. amounts of money. Correct. I mean, compare Singapore, Clark Key, Boat Key. Mm -hmm. The uh, businesses that are there are making loads of money through their asset value because everybody wants to sit in a restaurant there. What about the Klang River? Correct. It ain't Nobody, happening. No. So we need to spend billions to clean it up. That's right. And like you said, you know, it takes 800 million yeah. to clean up the Malacca River. The 800 million could have gone into uh, research into green technology, yes, yes, which the yes, government yes, is promoting. Yeah. The yeah, Prime yeah. Minister is giving a yeah, tax yeah. relief for, you know, green technology. Yeah, it's yeah. about time, I yeah, guess, that's that right. we change our mindset, isn't it? And another thing is energy efficiency. I mean, we have subsidized electricity. Yes. That's one of the barriers. And yeah. I think, you know, uh, um, again, taxpayer pays it indirectly themselves. Correct. I actually think we need to increase prices for electricity. Otherwise, <laughs> Malaysia is we never going to get efficient. Yes, yeah, correct. Malaysia is never going to water as well. But, you know, we need to help those that can't afford it yes. uh, through other means. Uh, I definitely agree with that. But if Malaysia doesn't become energy efficient, its economy is going to lag behind. Neighbors are implementing more energy efficiency measures because they have a shorter ROI, because the electricity is much more expensive. This will uh, downgrade the competitiveness of the country. Correct. I think at the end of the day, Malaysia needs to stand up and mm. listen and uh, hear that we it's time for us to do something. I mean, uh, yeah. uh, we'll just the last question before we yeah. wrap. Uh, can any advice for Malaysia on how to go green? Yeah. Reduce your electricity bill, reduce your water bill, mm -hmm. try and become carbon neutral. All your environmental impacts, you can compensate them <clears throat> by planting trees, mm -hmm. become a carbon sink. Meaning to say, if you absorb more CO2 emissions, that's the main global warming gas, then you're responsible for, then you are an environmental ambassador. If you save electricity, you can save money at the same time. Implement recycling. We did it in our condo in Chankad Raja Chulan, mm -hmm. and we helped the cleaners to get more Makan money. Wow. We tripled the recycling rate just by putting up simple bins raise the awareness think about the future you can be a positive agent of change there you know go. make a positive contribution for the future generations there you go and if you want to find out more about uh, you know what Matthias does you can go to www.greenmanspeaks.com or you can search for Matthias on Facebook it's Matthias Gelber M-A-T-T-H-I-A-S G-E-L-B-E-R and you can do a very simple you know contribution like wearing a t-shirt that's made of recycled material which is what Matthias is wearing today it's actually made of plastic bottles right yes plastic bottles and it even though i was told not to wear green this is my green t-shirt but it looks black it's his hijau t-shirt <laughs> so there you go you yes. can make an effort you can make a stand that's all the time we have thank you matthias for sharing all your tips and you know malaysia we can go green malaysia bullet malaysia bullet thank you very much okay thanks Bye. elaine thank you thank you it's very good for you to share with mm. us uh, do you